Shalom, 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 shalom. First and foremost, giving infinite praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahusha, Ba'ashim, Rechakodash. Giving double honor to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, salutation to all you sincere Akims across the four winds, pushing this truth with sincerity of heart. I'm your fellow servant, Gassama God from a DC camp. Coming at you through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahusha, Ba'ashim, Hakodash, and feed the elect. Now, in this um, particular um, lesson, just going into um, a lot of um, a lot of stuff that's going on, man. And, and there's this particular news that came out, um, and I just wanted to kind of touch on that, man. Um, showing that we've entered, you know, some really, really um, uh, perverse times. And uh, at this particular juncture, um, the United States of America, aka on um, the virgin daughter of Babylon, all right, spoken of in the book of Revelation. I mean, it's gotten to levels now where, you know, in the history you always hear, um, now, not only biblical history, but also secular history um, teaches you about ancient Sodom and Gomorrah. And you have to understand in 2022, I think it's official. And, you know, you can officially say it. You can officially say in 2022 that, that um, America is light years, uh, light years ahead of, um, you know, ancient Sodom and Gomorrah. I mean, the ways and the perversion and the wickedness, um, you know, the disregard for um, the law, statutes, commandments um, of the Heavenly Father, um, you know, the disregard for even when so, some, some called common sense. Um, so there's a lot, there's a lot that's going on. There's a lot of... Um, um, turning things upside down, um, delusions, uh, trying to warp people's minds, which ultimately goes goes back to um, Edom Esau, the devil that the Bible speaks of. His ultimate goal um, is to uh, corrupt your soul, um, and, and that's something I was meditating upon. Um, meditating upon um, because you know sometimes you you think that what Esau's you know really what really he wants to do. You know, he does wants to get rid of you. He does wants to kill you as an Israelite. He wants to get rid of us. That's true. But with a, a lot of um, meditations, man, I've, I've, I've really come to understand that the one thing that Esau wants to do the most uh, when it comes to you Israelites, so-called Negroes, Hispanics and Native Americans, his, 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 the thing that, that will bring him more joy, that brings him more joy than, than actually just exterminating Israelites, it's it's corrupting your soul, you know, it, because that is that is a the spiritual death is worse than than um, than the physical death. All right. Because you can you can live, you can breathe. But if you can be spiritually dead, that's worse than you dying physically while being alive spiritually as you take your last breath. And that's what we're going into now. We're going into that territory where Esau is really aggressively. Uh, putting aside every law, you know, of common sense, of course, added with the laws of the scriptures, putting all of that to the side and truly enforcing the doers that will. But anyway, that was just a synops synopsis, a quick synopsis. Um, you know, I'm not trying to have this uh, be too long, just trying to hit the points. As you see right here, this is um, out of 933FM, thefish.com. And it says, um, it says, uh, 10-year-old child drag star photograph posing with naked adult drag queen. So this is what's going on now. As you know, last month was um, quote-unquote Pride Month. And um, and it's, it, everything is being, is being pushed to the next level. Um, you know, it's the next level of wickedness, next level of darkness, um, which they call it, they call it expression and freedom. All right. So so that's how you sell wickedness now in 2022. The way you sell wickedness, the way you sell sin and abomination, it's not by calling it sin, uh, sin or abomination. It's by now calling, going off and being wicked, uh, an expression of freedom. And it's freedom for what? Really, it's freedom for the bind, the binding, right? The of the law, statutes, commandments of the Most High. All right. So. It says uh, a photo was shared on um, to Twitter on Thursday of a ten-year-old Canadian drag drag kid called Nimbus Queen 
Melison Golden with a fully grown adult drag queen who is completely naked. Now, there's in, in this um, article right here, do I have it? I think I do. I just want to make sure because it's kind of graphic, man. And it's going to be real quick. And this is um, out of uh, this is nearly naked drag queen. Uh, pulls child along at drag brunch. Um, yeah, it's it's a little graphic, so I'm just gonna you know skim through it right quick, just for the uh, algo. So as you see right here, that that you know right there, so grown man with, like I said, I'm not gonna stay on it for too long. Um, so grown man, you know, with um, basically a, a grown man. With uh, uh um fake breasts um you know surgically um you know yeah surgically implanted breasts and uh, you know with looking like a you know like a stripper but it's actually a man um you know so it's it and then you you got a ten year old child man just being paraded around uh you know. Um, malls and different places and this particular event it was just in, in open places man like it's just and these are things that as a man you know as a heterosexual man if you if you were to hold a hand of a 10 year old child that was not yours and talking about how you're going to teach him to um to be to express themselves you know you'll be thrown under the jail all right um you'll be you know you'll be called all types of pedophiles and um you know they'll throw the book at you because see if you call yourself a uh, heterosexual male um the laws of the laws still apply all right the laws still apply but see if you want to go around that right if you want to um ha a, 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 a experience um wicked lust and uh, uh um, the depri depravity if you want to do that without having to face and consequences in this kingdom then you must then yourself have corrupt your soul Right, your soul. You must corrupt your soul by turning yourself into something that you're not biologically, and then you allow to kind of circumvent the laws. Then you're not called a uh, the p word, so to speak. So it's and it's all about you corrupt corrupting your soul so you can corrupt another soul, another innocent soul, and 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 that is exactly where Esau has gone, uh, of course, with the the spiritual demon Satan. It's all about it's at this point it's is ultimately, you know, he's he's gonna start killing, you know, putting people in concentration camps, you know, but you Israelites, man, you have to understand that this is ultimately about having you be dead spiritually and corrupting your soul through lust. All right? Through wicked lust. So it says, um the piece featured several photos of the young boy dressed in the drag. Well, that's a different story, actually. Because this, this story is one story, and then the other one, which I don't want to really click too much on that, that that's, the, that's the one that was truly egregious. I can't play it, because if I play it, I already know, like, you know, I, I'm going to be stricken down by um <clears throat> by uh, YouTube, you know, so we don't definitely don't want to do that, you know. But it really takes you back again, when you go back to Sodom and Gomorrah, um, you know, you go back to Sodom and Gomorrah and all, all the vile acts that was that took place in that in that um in in that in those cities because those five cities, um, you look at those things. You have to put in perspective that back then, as wicked as Sodom and Gomorrah, Gomorrah was, they didn't have the technology that we have today. All right, they didn't have that type of technology, and the, also the level of influence. There wasn't uh, no social media where, you know, that. Like, as back then, the majority of it would, would take place in Sodom and Gomorrah. But now, through social media, everybody is connected. Everybody can see it. It's the, you know, perverse. Um, these perverse acts are no longer in the shadow. They're not just in a particular uh, uh, city. It's all the cities. All right? It's, it's, it's in all places. And really, ultimately, it's, it's, it's about infiltrating the souls, infiltrating the minds of the people. And primarily, you know, you Israelites, all right? Why? Because you're the sons of the Most High. You're the sons of God, the, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the true um, rulers and inheritors of the planet Earth and the universe. So having your soul be corrupted by, by you know, by these things is, is critical 
to Esau remaining in power and uh, and ruling for what he believes, right, is ruling for eternity. And his transhumanism uh, world, right, built them in a system, which is uh, his image, called the image of the beast. And, of course, his mark, which is the RFID microchip that, that will be implemented, forcefully implemented in the upcoming uh, uh, months and years. Okay. So now when you see this title, I just picked the title where it was, it, it, you know, it said Sodom and Gomorrah. And then the title, it says an erotic tale. And that word uh, erotic I was like, well, let me look up that word. Um, uh, let me look up that word um, erotic. So now when you look up the word erotic, right, it goes back to uh, f uh, French erotic, erotic, and it says caused by passionate love, referring to love, all right, sexual love, all right? And then you see right here, it goes back to the word eros, which is the god of love, the so the mythic, the, the um the so-called god of love you know which that goes back to ancient greek um myth all right so when you first that word love and that's another that's another thing that they use the, the misunderstanding of words you know such as they'll use something like expression of freedom when what you're doing is really is wicked you engaging into wicked lust abominations now they and then they'll say well it's you know they use words like um love you know, hoping and praying that spiritually you're not awakened. You don't understand what love means, according to uh, Yahweh Shemel Shah. So these are trickery. You know, these are things that they put out there to corrupt your soul. That's the reason why, you know, you, you got to block these things out. You got to constantly rebuke it. And, you know, uh, anytime and chance you see it, you know, your spirit has to c continually um, um, be uh, uh, rebuking that, you know, what I'm saying, and, and seeing it as what it is, which is not vow. Uh, it's not vow. So like, it, it is not. It's not love. It is not um, an expression of freedom. All right. This is just indulging into uh, wicked, wicked lust. Now let's deal with um, the book. Let's go to the book of um, Second Peter's. You know, because. The reality is only the elect can can escape the the madness that's coming down. Only the elect can escape it, and there's and there's but there's a process of how they're gonna go about escaping it. And uh, Peter, uh, in the book of Second Peter, you get you know the understanding of how the the the, the hopeful elect are gonna be able to um, escape this, all right, and not lose uh, lose themselves, right, in this madness. So it says uh, growth in, you know, I like the subtitle growth. In Christian virtue, which is really Israelite virtue, right? It says, Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of the Most High and our Savior Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. And that's the main thing. We have to have faith because you have to believe that this is temporary, all right? All this wickedness, all this perversion, you know, the, the, the children being uh, targeted for high levels of perversion, what's called grooming, right? Because, like I said, if you're a heterosexual man and and you groom a twelve a twelve year old, you're gonna be looked at as a, a pedophile, right? They, they're gonna want to throw you under the jail. But if you are not, if you are a man who, uh, um, you know, basically um, uh, 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 identifies itself, you know, as a drag, right, uh, of any part of the, the the Skittles Nation, then it's okay. Then you can groom. Um, the next generation, right, and not be uh, labeled a pedophile. So this is kind of the distorted dichotomy that that's set up in this society, where the light, the light is darkness, and the darkness is light. You know, the the evil is good, and then the good is called evil. All right, and the Lord predicted this. The Lord prophesied about this, man, in the Bible. So we shouldn't really be surprised, but it's still gonna be. It's something we gotta, we gotta, you know, we gotta fight spiritually. Cause this is a spiritual warfare. It says, "Grace and peace be upon, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of the Most High and Yahweh Shah, our Lord, according as His divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of Him that has called us, that has called us to glory and virtue." Right. So once you remove the godliness, when you when you remove, you know, the power, the Heavenly Father, His laws, that's commandments. On the faith in them, now you relegated to your own savage, carnal instincts, which this flesh was made 
this flesh was made to be susceptible to all the depravity that's going on out in the world. I mean, you have to understand they, they are linked. That's the reason why if you, spiritually you're not protected by the Lord, you can easily, you know what I'm saying, turn into, you know, these individuals out there and do the things that they're doing because the flesh, the carnal uh, flesh that you have is susceptible to these deeds. All right. This, the flesh is susceptible to the darkness. All right. So you must you must understand that, uh, um, you know, you, have, you must understand that. It's very important. So it says, uh, according to, uh, right, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us the, the glory and virtue. It says, verse 4, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. And that's the reason why we fight it. We fight it spiritually, mentally, right? Because we want to be part of the divine nature, eternal life, right? We want to have the bodies of righteousness with the mind of righteousness, right? And and live forever with Yahweh by Shem al in the kingdom of heaven, which is the kingdom of Israel established on earth. So we have to continue to resist. The scripture says, resist the devil, he shall flee. So you got to continue to resist. Now, we're not resisting to change the world. We're not going to change. You know, this is not a, our fight is not about changing Babylon and making Babylon a better place. No, our fight is about what? It's about remaining, what, remaining faithful and making sure that our souls and spirits are not co corrupted by false expressions of freedom and false, ex false expressions of love. All right. Twisted in misconception of what? Of the ignorant, of the unbelievers. All right. But the majority of our people, two thirds of out of, out of the nation of Israel, so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, they're gonna be susceptible to this madness, to all degrees of this madness and and depravity that's going on across the four winds. I mean, this is just how it's supposed to be. But us hopeful elect, we gotta continue to fight. All right, we gotta continue to resist. All right, it says, whereby are we? I'm gonna read it again, verse four. Whereby are we? Are, Whereby, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped, and this is the main point, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. That's how people get corrupted. The majority, 99% of the corruption in the world is through lust, it's through sexual deviancy, if that's the word, is through being a sexual deviant. All right. That's the reason why, because the sins that are usually allocated with, um, with sex are usually tend to be um, uh, some of the gravest sins that you can do. They tend to be abominable sins. All right. Then when you start dealing with wicked lust, because you have righteous lust and you have wicked lust. All right. So when you have wicked lust, it's, it's usually not time it's dealing with, you know, uh, um, sex. All right. And when you the thing about sex is sex is kind of being joined into when you having sex with, with, with a woman. You join in, you know, join with that woman. You be, you become one. So when you indulge in these things and these other sexual deeds, you become one with, with those things. You become married to it. So of course you're gonna be corrupted. Right? You, there's gonna be an influence. All right. Your deeds are gonna have your soul be corrupted. And now, right now, Esau's push is really ultimately about corrupting the souls of the Israelites, man. Really the entire planet, but primarily you Israelites. He has to make sure he wants us to be completely corrupted by accepting these things. You don't necessarily have to do these things. Like Romans say, it's not only the ones that do these things, it's also the ones that accept it, that clap on it, that 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 participate on it, even from a distance. You know? So you gotta continue to resist. That's what the Lord is looking for. That's how you escape the corruption on the, and, you know, through lust. Now, we look up the word lust. It's talking about desire, appetite. And again, you have to understand um, the key to wisdom is that there's double to that which is. All right. So there's wicked lust and there's righteous lust. There's good desires and good appetites and there's bad desires and wicked desires and wicked appetites. All right. That's when you start talking about wanton, playful, lustful, unruly. All right. And really, because your desire, your sexual desire has to have rules, you know, like, you know, OK, orgies just because it's, it's sex, but it's not sex that's ordained from the Lord. So if you are really 
then you would put a rule, meaning a measurement, a barrier, a, 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 a bound, right? And say, hey, this is what I can do, and this is what I can't do. But Esau is telling you, F that wall, F those boundaries, right? F those borders. That's where you get the laws, because the laws are set up in the borders. That's why we have a border of blue with the fringes. Esau said, F the borders, F the laws, do what you want to do. But that's not realistic. That's not, that's not how the Heavenly Father has set up. That is a trap. That is a snare for you to get destroyed. And that's a, that's how you get corrupted. There's a reason why nations have borders, so they don't get their nation don't get corrupted by their neighbors' nation. Okay, that's how you get corrupted. All right, and that's what Esau wants to do. He wants to corrupt your soul, man. So let's go to um, Revelation. Well, actually, let's go to uh, corruption first. What's the word corruption? There you go. The word corruption. Because uh, um, Peter spoke about corruption, they escape the corruption in the world through lust. All right, so corruption is this act of becoming putrid, dissolution, decay. All right, decay. Well, actually, it says especially dead bodies. It says um, of material things, especially dead bodies. Now, speaking of the dead bodies, we know physical dead bodies, when they die, they start to corrupt. You know, they have uh, um, maggots um, start to, uh, you know, start to, you know, to come out and eat, eat, eat the flesh and start to deteriorate, right? Now, if you go again, remember this is a spiritual warfare. So if corruption comes from dead bodies, well, what does the scripture say in Revelation about the spiritual dead bodies? Revelation 11 and 8, it says, And the dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. It's talking about Israelite dead bodies, but it's talking about what? Spiritually dead. Meaning what? Corrupted. All right? That's what it means in their dead bodies, right? Meaning what the corrupted minds of the nation of Israel, the majority of Israelites, men and women. It says in their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, which is the United States of America, because it brings about the acts of um, Sodom, ancient acts of Sodom, Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah, and the ancient acts of uh, Egypt. Okay, ancient Egypt. Where also our Lord was crucified, right? Which our Lord is Yahweh Shah, right? Whom the world has ignorantly known as Jesus Christ. They crucified him by bringing about Christianity, you know, removing our, our nationality, Jeremiah 17 and 6. You know what I'm saying? Removing our nationality from us. So the Lord has been removed. He had been removed from the minds of the Israelites for, for 500 years. You know what I'm saying? It's not up until the 60s that the Spirit of the Lord came back. You know, through, you know, uh, uh, Elijah, a.k.a. John the Baptist, a.k.a., you know, uh, Abba Bibbins. You know what I'm saying? And then from there, all the, our elders and apostles. And that's how we've been able to awaken out of the, 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 the corruption. And now the corruption is getting worse and worse and worse. And if you're not awakened, you're going to end up being corrupted spiritually. And that is truly the real death. You know, spiritual death and, and being corrupted is truly the real death. All right. So this is uh, Jude chapter 1, verse 5, it says, And I will dare, well, verse 7, it says, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornications and going after strange flesh, and set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. All right? And we know exactly what happened. And like I said, Sodom and Gomorrah ain't got nothing on America, man. America, man, the virgin daughter of Babylon is light years Ahead of a, a, a ancient Sodom and Gomorrah, man. In 2022, Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah cannot hold a candle to what, you know, America and the West are able to do when it comes to going into these, these high level uh, places of uh, depravity. All right. So now when you go back to uh, the word co um, corruption, another word that comes up is um, decay. All right. So we dealt with dead bodies. Now, decay. Now, what did Tobit say about this? You know, what is it? Uh, I know I had it. Come on now. There you go. This is Tobit chapter 4, verse um, 13. It says, Now, therefore, my son, love thy brethren and despise not in thy heart thy brethren, the sons and daughters of thy people, and not taking a wife of them. For in pride is destruction and much trouble, and in lewdness is decay. You see, that decay comes with lewdness. Lewdness is what? Is living a depraved, sexually depraved lifestyle. That's how you become lewd. 
And through the lewdness comes decay. You decay in the mind and spirit. And then also the nation itself decays. That's why it's not a coincidence that you see what's going on with the United States now. And the state of this land is in total decay. Because of the excess level of lewdness. All right. It says in great want. It says for lewdness is the mother of famine. Thus, now you see why what's coming down the pipe is what is famine. Because we've already been on the third seal, which was the black horse. And now we and we getting ready to enter into what? The fourth seal, which is what? Which is the pale horse that brings about famine, death. Because that's what comes when you live a lifestyle that's lewd and sexual depravity. What what happens? The Heavenly Father sends a plague to your nation called famine. Before he, you know, he burns, he burns the place. He's gonna bring famine. Alright? So <clears throat> In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 6, it says, uh, In turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemning them with an overthrow, making them an example or an example unto those that after should live ungodly. All right? And the people that live in, in, in the United States now, man, in Babylon, they're even more ungodly than, than um, you know, the nations, you know, of course, begin with the Hamites, the nations of, that, that lived in Sodom and Gomorrah. All right. So let's get these two precepts and close out. So um, I'm gonna, first, I'm going to go to Luke chapter 17 and um, 28. It says, likewise, also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. I mean, the, the 4th of July just went by. They're still celebrating, acting like everything is Gucci. When the whole time evils are progressing around the world, famine is right around the corner, more deaths and crime has risen up. Every week now, you get an average of about 40 people per, or about 20 people per city getting shot. People getting judged. It's just madness. But yet, they're celebrating. They're still getting married. Nobody wants to acknowledge the times that they're living in, right? Nobody wants to acknowledge uh, uh, um, uh, that, hey, this is this kind of smells like the end times. But it's all good. The hopeful elect, you know, said we're fully aware of what's going on. And we praise your whole body, Shemel Shah, for that. Verse 29, but the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. And Lot, you know, although it was a real person, a real story, today Lot represents the elect out of the nation of Israel. All right. And and once Lord willing, I'm a part of it. Once the Lord pull up with the chariots, man, and, 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 and rounds up his elect the same day. You're going to see thermonuclear missiles, ICBMs rain down. That's going to be the fire that's going to rain down on this place, man. And let's say of the Bible. Okay, this is prophecy. It's been, it's been written in the book for over 2,000 years. All right. So I'm going to finish with uh, Luke chapter 10. Uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 10. And this for us, the men of the Lord, the prophets. You know, we got we to keep pushing this word, keep resisting. It says, Luke chapter 10, verse 10. It says, but into, into whatsoever city ye enter. And they receive you not. Go your ways out in, into the streets of the same and say, even the very dust of your city, which cleaveth unto us, we do wipe off against you. Notwithstanding, be ye sure of this, that the kingdom of the Most High is coming nigh unto you. Right? Whether you hear, whether you forbear. Verse 12. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. And that's what it is. Like. What happened to Sodom is going to pale in comparison to what's going to happen to this place, man. And those cities that we got to go, and not only is it, is it talking about Israelites in the cities that's refusing to receive the word of Yahweh by Shemel Shah, you know, those cities represent the people. This is represents the nation of Israel, Jerusalem, all right, located in all the different cities in the United States and also across the four winds. You have to be. You know, you have to be receptive. You have to have that tender heart and, rec and receive the word and grafted word of Yahweh Bashim Shah that you may be to save your soul because Esau wants your soul. He wants you spiritually dead and corrupted way more than he wants you to just die. All right. So that's all I had, man. Call Halayim Lay Yahweh Bashim Al Shah, the bond, the store, apostle, elders, a great millstone, shout out to one, salutation. He says, I can score some four wins because I'm gone from a DC camp. Shout out one.